All right, so I've still had a couple of people who are trying to argue that words are simply in space and time the way other things are. I've been trying to suggest that words are the way that humans get out of the immediate space and time of their immediate environment in a way that other animals are perhaps just installed in it. I want to offer a couple of examples and then see if I can't get some response from people. You, anyone who really thinks that words are just in space and time, try to consider these examples and then we can talk about it. Uh, first off, imagine some person comes up and they say, hey, don't eat any apples, there's a shortage. Now, if some person were to say, don't eat any apples, there's a shortage, I think we would understand the sentence, and if we wanted to be nice, we could avoid the apples and somehow keep the shortage from uh, depleting and uh, running out of, you know, we could avoid running out of apples. If some person came up to you and said, shh, don't use the word apples, there's a shortage, I think we would go, um, you're talking crazy talk. There can't be a shortage of a word. A word is not in space or time the way a thing is, right? Part of this is brought out really well. I brought this quotation up many times. I think some people skirt around it. They don't want to address it. Please try to address this issue. Irving Goffman, in a book called Strategic Interaction, he writes, of all of the things of this world, information is the hardest to guard because it can be stolen without removing it. Okay, what does that mean? Why can information be stolen without removing it? It must be somehow not a thing in space or time. It's a principle of repeatability that accrues meaning according to the contexts that is participated in. Now, if you try to say, look, the word or its meaning or just located in the brain, there it's going to be very problematic as well. Uh, what we found through stroke survivors, all kinds of other things that consonants are located one place, vowels are located another place. If a person has a literate mind as opposed to a wholly oral mind, uh, the word is diffusely located uh, in different parts of the brain. Even there, it's never just one person's brain. It's always in multiple brains because words aren't private property. People can actually surprise themselves by the meaning they find in what they've said. It's not just that they have a meaning in their head and then the words are this empty cloak that they stuff inside the words in order to get it across to another person. No, people can actually speak and be surprised by uh, what they say. And it's not just what they say, but the meaning they find in what they say. Well, words aren't just private property. They're communal property. They're one of the greatest examples of human relations as being communal rather than private. Our our very minds, to the extent that they're made over in the image of language, are somehow between other people. That is, we've been otherized. I'm, one's otherized to oneself. You have a sense of who you were, who you are, and who you will be. All of those are possible through language. In so many ways, words create a distance between others, and then words relate back those others, they create a way of unifying what they've also separated. It, it seems very paradoxical, but that is part of the ambiguous paradox of language. It isolates but brings together, and it's never private, right? Um, I think one last way to just think about it is, if you really want to get at some of the ways that words are never just private property, try to watch a show like Beavis and Butthead, where they go, uh, uh, she said would. Somehow, if they're able to laugh at the meaning that can be found in the word that's beyond the speaker's intention, it seems like we're going to have to deal with the problem of language being somehow communal. And even there, it's not just that other people can you know, derail a conversation. It's that the words actually are overpopulated by meanings that surpass an individual's intentions. Okay, thanks.